my wife is gonna be super stoked that I've got a bigger one now. This thing's running longer than a six foot pole. Let's go and uh, cut some grass. <laughs> How's it guys? Welcome back. What are we doing in the Bird Bulls garage today? We are welding a stainless steel gas tank for our vintage Victor 1042 mini tractor. Now, a quick word of warning. Don't let your confidence exceed your skill level. Welding a used gas tank is extremely dangerous. Actually, it's better left to the professional. So, don't try this at home. Out of fuel. So yeah, that happened a lot, like every five minutes a lot. And I don't think it is because the old gas tank was leaking, I think, but probably because it was too small. So, I guess I need a bigger one. That's what she said. So for the main body of our fuel tank, we're gonna use this piece of stainless steel box gutter. Now, it's about 100 by 100 by 220 millimeters long and I do promise I didn't unbolt this from the neighbor's wall last time I checked. We're also gonna use this piece of threaded section. Now this comes off the top of an old stainless steel uh, water pump. I just cut it off there with the angle grinder and the loose plan here is to weld that on there. Of course, we've gotta make a hole in here first, so we'll weld that on. And then for the fuel cap, I've got this one and a quarter inch BSP plastic pipe end or cap fitting that's going to basically screw into the top there. And we might have to drill a small little hole here um, as a bit of a vacuum relief to go into the, the tank as the fuel level drops. I'm not too sure what we're gonna do there yet. Maybe I can actually find a little one-way valve. But anyway, that's the plan for the top. Then of course on the sides, we need to cover up each side. So I've got this scrap stainless that I had lying around. Um, not even sure what grade it is. I think it is 316. But anyway, we'll um, weld the cap end onto either side and then at the bottom for the outlet you can see i've already marked it here we're going to use this 90 degree um, stainless steel bend now this had a small piece of thread on the top i've cut that off so we're going to drill a hole and then weld that onto the bottom so it'll look like it'll look like that and then uh, i've got this eight millimeter barbed end here that's a bit of a mixed bag of things here there's uh, a bobbed end going into an adapter and then only going into our 90 degree bend. It's like this because I'm using what I've got on hand and then that's going to be our fuel tank. So let's get making. Cool, so we've got uh, both sides welded on completely all around the outsides here. I think it came out okay, definitely good enough to do the job. I've also welded on the top bung, completely welded it all the way around and our tank lid still fits and works in there quite nicely. So 
luckily that hasn't warped or done anything silly. Um, so what we need to do now is weld the bottom sort of outlet on. There has been a slight change of plan. I was originally going to use this piece, so if you remember we were going to weld it on like that. But after cutting it and cleaning it up, I see that it's actually a brass 90 degree elbow. So unfortunately we can't TIG weld brass onto this. So ended up uh, just quickly going out and getting a 3 8 and 90 degree bend. Uh, this is 316 stainless with also a stainless um, barbed end here and then uh, I couldn't get couldn't get the right size uh, to fit directly in there so I also had to buy a little adapter. But nevertheless, same type of principle, we are now just going to weld that onto the bottom. So let's get going. So there we have it, uh, it's all been nicely finished and welded up. So of course you did see previously, um, we welded the bung on and all the sides were welded up. I also managed to get this uh, bottom 90 degree elbow welded up. Um, this is the, the outlet, so I've ended up going back to that brass barb. Uh, I thought, well, you know what, I've got the brass barb. Let me keep that um, stainless steel barb for another project possibly. So anyway, glad that worked out and um, it's, it's come out fairly well, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. Another change that I made, uh, or addition, should I say, is the mounting points. So I've taken two 8mm domed stainless steel nuts, uh, drilled holes into the back of the tank and welded around each nut. Um, of course, I have checked the entire tank for uh, leaks, so it's not leaking around any of those. Um, did that with soap and water. None of the welds are leaking, by the way, which is um, <laughs> it's always a good thing. Hopefully this is going to work. Hopefully it's not going to vibrate and crack around there. But I thought, let me try this type of mounting method rather than making little tabs on the side um, and then bolting it through or, or straps that go around the tank. This is just a whole lot more clean and neat. So hopefully that does work. We've also, for now, drilled a hole, a small hole in the top of our fuel cap. That's just to let air in um, and so the fuel can expand. Uh, at a later stage, I'll see if I can get a one-way valve for that. But anyway, it's uh, turned out quite nice and um, I've gone with a brass finish, so scotch brighted the whole thing. And of course, uh, as you previously saw, I did pickle it, so none of the welds should rust or, or go brown or anything. Um, but I suppose time will tell. So, that all said, let's go and install it. OT, you've been good to me, but mate, it's time for you to go. So, just as a reminder, this was the original uh, temporary fuel tank that we made when we were trying to get the motor started. This thing is like 200 milliliters. It's an old rusted can that I soldered a barb onto the bottom and just put a little fuel filter in there. Of course, it's resting on this piece of wood and it was taped up with insulation tape. So I'm pretty glad that we're getting rid of this. And as you may have noticed in previous videos, you can pretty much drive for all of like three minutes, maybe five minutes on this tank before you have to fill it up again. So not very useful. So anyway, uh, out with the old and in with the new. And what I've done here to match those two holes in the back of the tank, which we saw earlier, I've just drilled two eight millimeter holes over there. And then we'll just use normal bolts through the back. So I ended up putting some of this thin foam tape on the back of the tank. Not sure if it's strictly necessary, but anyway, put it on and we'll see what happens. And that's going to provide a little bit of a cushion between the back of the tank and this backing plate. Cool. Seems to be quite sturdy on there. Uh, we will revisit this. Uh, I think these bolts are going to um, rattle or vibrate loose. I didn't want to pull it up too tight. So maybe we'll end up putting a little bit of Loctite in the back there. But I think for a test, this is going to work out well. And I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, kind of maybe suits the type of era where this tractor was out in the 
1970s, you know, with that square style, very raw style looking welding and everything. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the moment of truth, I suppose. Let's uh, dump some fuel in here and see what happens. The capacity of this tank should be 1.9 liters, or at least that's what I calculated to be. It's about half a US gallon, so hopefully it's gonna take that. It's substantially more than the 200 milliliters that the old small fuel tank was, so it should run a whole lot longer. Let's go and uh, cut some grass. <laughs> Exciting stuff. So something that I haven't really showed you guys before is this grass catcher that I've been working on. Now, it's not complete. It's the second uh, iteration of what it is. That's why it's all taped up and looks like it does. I'm still kind of trying to settle myself on a design that works. So far this one is working, but kind of clips to the uh, side of the Victor's um, cutting deck there, and it tends to catch the grass pretty damn well. So maybe we'll have a look at this in another episode, but anyway, for now, let's get cutting. Looks like so far the grass catcher works pretty well. I mean, the bag is full. Yep, yep, yep. My wife is gonna be super stoked that I've got a bigger one now. You know, this thing's running longer than a six foot pole. Oh, geez. More gas in the tank is what I mean, you know? Get the job done, two minutes flat. So what should we start working on next? The grass catcher, the orange tractor. Guys, I don't know. Let us know what you think, put it in the comments below. Also, if you are interested in the rebuild videos of this or that orange tractor, check them out possibly somewhere down there. Otherwise, links will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for all of your support. My name is Grant Burton. This is the Burton Builds Garage and you guys will see me in the next video. Cheers.